Hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host. Thanks very much for taking the time to uh, join me for today. Uh, a special show today. I just wanted to recap the exciting announcement that happened from Stellantis today. Uh, they did a live um, a live stream, web stream this afternoon, and it was really all about their next decade plans, kind of solidifying a lot of information that we have heard uh, and just actually adding a lot more facts and details to it. So quite exciting. So I thought it warrants its own episode. I wanted to get this out. So I'll give you a quick recap of what they said. So as I mentioned, this was what they called EV Day 2021, and it was the Stellantis live broadcast. And let me go through some of the highlights and give you some of the details from what they talked about. Really, to touch base, the whole focus of the, is about a two-hour announcement, and the whole focus was that they are full speed into electrification growth. They plan on spending more than 30 billion euro for over the next five years in electrification and software, and they they want to, of course, continue to be an automotive front runner. And in the EV field, they talked a lot about efficiencies, which I picked up on. They really want to lead that, and that's a tough thing to do. It's especially if you understand where Tesla's been and what they offer, efficiency is a pretty strong characteristic of the Tesla products. And Stellantis has recognized that, even though they didn't come out and say Tesla, but they did harp a few times in this broadcast about efficiencies and about them being the leader. In fact, they want to have a 30% better efficiency for all electric vehicles than the industry average. Certainly a tall order. And they want to target over 70% of the sales in Europe and over 40% of sales in the United States to be LEV by 2030. Now, all 14 brands are committed to the offering, and they want to deliver BEVs that meet the demands of customers with ranges from 500 kilometers uh, to 800 kilometers or 300 to 500 miles. How are they going to do this? Doing it with four flexible uh, BEV or, or battery only by design platforms. And these are scalable and they, they have sized them into, into the four uh, platforms and the families that they call them. And they're going to be composed of modules and standardized battery packs to cover all these brands and the segment. Now these platforms are designed for long life via software and hardware upgrades, which is great. And they're also going to set up and continue to evolve and grow a global EV battery sourcing strategy. They want to have over 260 gigawatt hours of battery uh, availability by 2030. And they're going to support that by building or implementing through partners, five gigafactories. It's interesting they took that name between Europe and North America. Now plans also include dual battery chemistries and a high energy density option and a nickel cobalt free alternative just within the next three years by 2024. And another cool thing that I, I heard them say and talk about is they want to have solid state battery technology uh, introduced by 2026 for future vehicles at that point. So they obviously have something in the works regarding solid state batteries. And from 2026, um, fully electrified models will deliver. And this is one thing I heard them say a couple times, double digit margins. So after they make a lot of these investments over the five years, they expect the margins to grow from single to double digits, which again is good because that will spur OEMs and manufacturers to build more EVs because they will be profitable. And they also stated that they believe that in by 2026, their, the total cost of ownership for their electric vehicles will be equal to that of an internal combustion vehicle, and that will be without any government incentives. Now, does that mean it's going to be price parity? Mm, I don't think so. You have to read between the lines in that, but it's going to be close. But at least we're heading in that right direction, and I would not be surprised to see cost parity. Now, with regarding those brands, again, all of them are committed to uh, having fully electrified offerings. They went to the U.S. and looked at the Dodge brand. And, you know, it was interesting listening to the American presentation because it was all about muscle car and performance. And Dodge is a muscle car brand. That's their heritage, which is the truth. And in fact, their, their uh, uh, high-level exec talking said, we will not sell electric. He said, but we will sell American e-muscle. 
So they're taking the electric and they're just kind of tweaking it from a marketing standpoint, calling it e-muscle, focusing on younger generations like millennials and such with that have larger spending powers and all that kind of stuff that want and, and that like the muscle car heritage, realizing that um, they are starting to reach the practical limits to internal combustion vehicle or engine performance. And that's one of the first OEMs that I've heard to come out and say that, um, you know, and that's that's another key point, uh, folks, please take away from this and from what they've been saying. They are recognizing some of these things now, and it's good for them to say that. So the, there's only so much you can do with the internal combustion engine getting so much horsepower and stuff out of it, it reaches a limit. So they need to embrace electrification, and Dodge realizes that. And in 2024, Dodge will launch the world's first full battery electric muscle car. Through intelligent evolution, we expect to thrive and define the future of American muscle, to tear up the streets, not the planet. Hold on a minute. Did we hear that right? Dodge is making an electric car? We're talking hypothetical, right? Surely you jest. Dodge? You mean the people who devised the legendary 426 Hemi and sunk it into a sublime missile? You mean the Dodge that created the Hellcat Red Eye? Fastest and most powerful muscle cars in the world? Makers of the 840 horsepower wheel standing demon? Why on God's green earth would Dodge ever? build an electric car. Anybody? Any thoughts out there? Hello? So they're saying that they're embracing an evolution, not necessarily a revolution, um, and that they're going to uh, have a first full electric muscle car, an American-built made muscle car by 2024, and their slogan is, let's tear up the streets, not the planet. I thought that was pretty cool. So the summary is that all the brands have a pathway to electric vehicles, which I thought was great. Now they touched, uh, and I won't spend a lot of time on commercial vehicles. They talked about it, that they are a world leader, that they're going to focus on the Ram and the uh, uh, products, which of course they're going to talk about, they're going to produce some fuel cell vehicles as well in the vans by 2021 or by 2022, I guess. Um, and, and understanding that that is an area where fuel cells will work in that commercial, especially that that smaller last mile segment is a great place to provide that. They're going to focus on growing the charging infrastructure and uh, make those transformational times for consumer, uh, for commercial vehicles and commercial customers a lot less and faster that they could happen. Now, technology. I mentioned about the Jeep quickly. They showed pictures of an autonomous Jeep and also pairing with a drone and all these other cool things that uh, you, you could use these glasses and, and kind of summon your jeep to you in the trail and use these glasses to drive it google glasses or something i don't know it, it might have been concept but just the thought that they're working on something and they recognize that these are things that are going to help them drive and move these products forward i thought was a big step so remember that too folks a little bit about the ecosystem i won't spend a lot of time but they are they they do know that if you build it they will come like tesla did with the supercharging network they realize that they need a supporting ecosystem for all these vehicles that they want to bring to market they're talking they, talk, they talked about some pilots are doing in italy with smart grid technology and they want to launch that's what i'm trying to say the largest um, fast charging network in southern europe and they're going to partner with Angini eps to do that, it's going to start in Southern Europe and expand further. And finally, they ended the presentation with financials because knowing analysts will be on this call. And basically, they just said that they're going to have 55 LEV vehicles by 2025 across all those brands. 40 of them will be all electric. And I thought that is great news. With over, again, 30 billion euros in investments to reduce their manufacturing costs, their battery costs, uh, the time to market, all those costs that are involved in bringing a vehicle to market. Again, 
talking about the margins, going from single digit today, which I think was 6 or 9%, up to double digits. Now, we don't know what those double digits are, but they have to be at least fairly significant to be profitable. If, or if you're going to spend that kind of money, you're going to need to return on that investment over time. Uh, they do have a plan in place to have very healthy margins on all electrics, which I love to hear because that will just make them want to produce more. They love to compete and they believe they have the scale, the technology, and the competitive spirit, uh, of course, with financial stability to deliver on everything that you heard in this presentation or that they said today. Um, they want to keep and maintain an, a, at least a 30% lead on efficiency on their investments using diversity and all the other metrics. And remember, you know, they have 300, over 300,000 person workforce in over 50 countries. So if anybody's got a real good chance of doing it, like I've talked about VW Group, Stellantis has it as well. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. I hope you enjoyed my look at the uh, Stellantis EV Day. I tried to summarize it as fast as I could. It was a two-hour presentation, folks. It was actually really good. I was actually uh, very well glued to watching it for the two hours. Even a lot of great questions from, from analysts, mainly analysts and financial people. And I think they had really good responses to everything. So there is a replay that should be available on their website. You can watch the whole thing. The main body was about an hour and a half or so. Then they they took about half an hour or so for questions. So I hope you enjoyed that. I can't stress enough, folks, how important these kinds of things are. When we see those big OEMs, you know, remember, Stellantis is Chrysler, right? And all those brands and, and all these other brands, the 14 brands that they have, Maserati, um, you know, uh, Alfa Romeo, all these kind of things. These are brands with a lot of heritage. When you hear that they're going, when you hear their strategy and their game plan for moving to electrification, it's a big deal. And this is the first time that I can think of maybe beyond a Tesla call or a Tesla battery day or some sort of presentation where they've gone into a lot of detail on how they're going to get there within this decade. They have a concrete plan with good metrics and I believe the right people at the helm that they want to do it. It's not that they need to do it. They know they need to do it, but they want to do it. And that's the takeaway that I got from this presentation. Really happy to hear it. My hat's off to Stellantis. So again, thanks for joining me. And again, thanks for watching on YouTube. If you haven't subscribe please do it's always important to have those subscribers up um, and i welcome uh, comments of course always on youtube i try to answer each and every one of them always humbled by my patreon supporters thank you you know who you are if you're interested in helping me out on patreon you can look at the link below and check that out totally up to you keep watching the ev revolution in the marketplace boy i mean today days like today really get me excited in doing what i'm doing there are days where i'm not so ex excited folks sometimes i think we take a step back but today is a really good day i love when when the big guys come out and talk and they say they're all in and then they show a way they show a plan and they execute they've already started executing in that plan and that makes me really happy so again continue to watch that marketplace everybody stay safe uh, of course and until the next time, I will see you when I see you. Take care and all the best. Bye-bye.